right guys well it's december 27th and we are loaded up in the car headed down to sonora texas we're actually going to take a quick pit stop we're not going to go the whole trip tonight we're actually going to stay in shreveport louisiana so i'm going to pop in and stay with a cousin of mine i'm going to drive about eight hours tonight and then i'm going to go the rest of the way tomorrow so i'll leave out real early in the morning and by the time I get there, it'll probably be about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock maybe. So hopefully we'll be able to make some good time and have a good safe trip and maybe fill our freezer. So we'll see you. After about 15 hours of driving, we make it through Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, and finally into Texas, where we soon find ourselves in Sonora. You can see the landscape changes dramatically as we go from Kentucky, where things are somewhat green, to Texas, where everything seems to be brown and dry. All right, guys, but well, we made it here. We're here in Sonora, Sonora Texas, and uh, we just got set up in the blind, got the camera up, got everything ready. The feeder just went off, and uh, The first night produced action in almost the first 20 minutes of the sit. We had some whitetail does move in, followed by a couple of whitetail bucks, and then we had some axis does and some young axis bucks that moved in, followed by a big mature axis buck. Unfortunately, as you'll see, he was missing half of his rack. Now, if he had his other side, my hunt would have been over in the first afternoon. When I got back to camp, we found that three of the hunters tagged out the very first night of the hunt. Two big whitetail bucks and a black buck antelope were taken. If you want to shoot her, shoot her, shoot her, get the gun up, it's almost dark. And, and then they shoot and he comes up and he's right behind a tree. His vitals are hidden behind a tree. Hidden right behind and I mean, shot early? No, 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 we shot late. That, they were early. That was oh, the first yeah. thing we killed. So that's what I'm saying. When they shot. No, no, no. When they saying. shot. Okay. When they shot it. And then they shot twice. The second time, I thought he was going to bolt. And I mean, he was looking. And then he put his head back down and he took one step. And he was walking back towards the woods. And I was like, if you're on him, shoot. If you're on him, shoot. If you're there on his shoulder, shoot. Shoot him on the shoulder. Shoot. Boom! Whoa! <laughs> he couldn't get his ears out because he had stuck him back in his bag. So I gave him a little. After some dinner and some time sitting around the campfire, we turned in early to get some rest before the next morning hunt. The first morning in the blind proved to be absolutely incredible. Within moments of daylight, we saw white-tailed deer, followed by a massive flock of Texas turkey. They moved in and absolutely surrounded our blind. Now, after the turkey began to kind of move off, we noticed more whitetail, and then axes began to move in the area as well. It wasn't that much longer. We had some big whitetail and big axis buck that began to feed on the corn piles that were all down the Sandora.
Now, if you'll pay attention, you'll see a big buck that moves into the area. Now, at first, we didn't know quite how big he was because he was just in this big horde of white-tailed deer and axis eating on this corn. But as he separates himself and begins to move closer towards us, we see just how big he is. And we were impressed. Now, me personally, I was hunting for an exotic, and so my attention was completely focused on an exotic. But Wesley, who was with me, he wanted to shoot that buck so bad. But by the time that we got the go-ahead that we could take this whitetail, the big buck had already moved off. Now this is where my attention was at. I was fully focused on this big axis buck. But if you'll notice his antlers, he wasn't fully tipped out or his velvet wasn't done growing. And so he wasn't a candidate to harvest, but it made for some really good film and for some really good entertainment. After an extremely productive morning, we were picked up and brought back to the lodge to grab a quick bite to eat before we went back out for our afternoon hunt. Now this is where the story gets really interesting. There was a particular black buck that I was trying to connect with. Now he had successfully evaded me every single time I've been out thus far. Everyone has seen him but me. And I was in the same blind that I was at earlier that morning. Me and Wes and Mark were all there together. Now, we hadn't been in the blind for very long when we looked up at the very end of the Sindora. Mark said, hey, there is your black buck. We get out of the blind and make a stalk on this black buck. He's already turned the corner and was going down to another feeder. We get down to where that feeder is at and the buck had already moved off. He was already gone. So we made our way back to our original blind. Now it wasn't that much longer that we got a call from the outfitter and he said, hey, the black buck is back here at the same feeder by the blind. So Mark looks at me and says, Clint, you gotta run. So I get up and I make a stalk on this black buck once again. Now, by the time I actually get to the blind, remember the wind at this time, you can tell is blowing really hard in my face. So things are actually really good for me. But when I get to the blind, there was no black buck. He had already moved off again. So I climb into the blind with Kelly Brooks. Now to spice things up a little bit more, the black buck actually came back around within about 20 minutes of me getting into the blind. He did not offer a shot because he basically just ran past us. But it was not that much longer that he came back out from my left to my right and circled around the feeder and would soon present me with a shot. To this point, the black buck had successfully either stayed behind another animal, behind the trees, or simply would not stand still. Eventually, the black buck moved out of the trees, moved away from all the other animals, and presented me a good broadside shot. needed 
it was a split second of a good broadside shot to bring the chase to a close. He offered it to me, I took it, and he didn't go anywhere. Now, Kelly Brooks, who's hunting with me at the time, was still hunting for an Axis buck. So what I did was I quickly got down out of the blind, we grabbed the antelope and got it out of the way. So there isn't any video of the recovery, but there is a good picture of me and the antelope. With my buck tag now punched, I still have a tag for a white-tailed doe. So I get up early the next morning, go to a different blind with hopes of sealing the deal on a good doe. Now the morning hunt did not disappoint. It wasn't that long of being in the blind. I had white-tailed does, a decent white-tailed buck, and then some axis does move into the area. Now off to my right, there was a couple of good-sized does feeding on the alfalfa. My hopes was to harvest one of them as soon as they came into my camera frame. Unfortunately, they never would quite cooperate. It wasn't about four to five minutes later, another white-tailed doe moved in from my left. So I quickly adjusted, swiveled the camera, and got locked onto the stove. It only took one quick, clean shot to this doe to bring her to the ground. And thankfully, I was only about a hundred yards away from the lodge, so I was able to walk back, get the Polaris Ranger, and get her loaded up. Well, guys, it's my last day in Texas. Actually, tomorrow is supposed to be my last day. But, uh, I'm already tagged out, and I had to shot my black buck yesterday. Shot a white-tailed doe just a few minutes ago, and so um, I'm gonna get her loaded up and get back to the to the shop. We've got a storm moving in. We're you know there's we're in a terrible drought here in West Texas, and what's crazy is the one week that we're here, we've got a storm coming in tonight, and the temps are falling. We've got a winter storm morning, and they're calling for a bunch of of snow. <laughs> so this is unreal. But I mean, I don't know if you can tell behind me. I mean, like it's just it's getting nasty. It's sprinkling and raining right now. Wind's starting to pick up. But I've got the ranger here. I'm gonna get this doe loaded up, get her put in the um, put in the back of the, the ranger here, and then hopefully get her put up real quick, eat a quick bite, and then we're gonna actually start packing up and, and getting back to the, um, I wanna try to get back to Louisiana if I can tonight, and then get back to Kentucky uh, tomorrow. So uh, it's been an awesome time. Had a fantastic week. Cannot wait to come back. And honestly, um, those axis deer, they are incredible. So as I've got to kind of watch them, of course I've not had any opportunities at any big hard horned ones. Only one I saw that was hard horned was um, broke off. And so, man, I'm, I'm fired up to come back and to, and to nail a big old, big old axis buck. Man, I love that black buck. That was a bucket list animal I wanted to take. Very, very thankful. God's been good, giving me safety, bless my hunt. But we got some guys still out there, so I'm gonna load up and get back in the back in the cabin thanks for following along with me on this bucket list hunt i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did